Now Grontid is absorbing Jode's core. As long as the moons remain aligned, the power flowing through him is unimaginable. Get me to that platform, Tarn. I can separate the moons using the altars. You must deal with Mulamnir Five Claw. I will divert whatever energy I can into the Dragonhorn, but use it sparingly. Dare to face me, morsel. Let's <laughs> 
Dogs live! The ritual. John and Jode, hear me. The power, it belongs to me. You did it, Amir. You ended the eclipse. No. That means. Sound. No. The gate has closed. I we are trapped, yes. But the Moon is dead, and Cal Grontid has been defeated. Oh, hello. You always find things in the last place you know. Cal Grontid, I wonder. I'm actually pleased to see you, Cadwell. Come, Chimera. Your people await their queen. Thank you, my friends, for everything.
Queen Chimera. Have you been injured? I am fine. Just tired. But look, the moons are no longer aligned. Tell me. Tell me about the dragons. The Euraxians. What is the state of our forces? Our scouts tell us that most of the Euraxians and dragons fled when the moons parted. Our own troops have not returned, but the main has sent an envoy. An envoy from the main? Hmm. If you'll excuse me, I have other business to attend to. We did it, Five Claw! We put the moons back in motion and defeated both Mulanir and Kalgrontid. I... I want to thank you for everything. Elsewhere is safer today because of you. Just being on the plane of Jod clarified the memories I inherited at the Shadow Dance Temple. I saw the ritual in my mind and performed the actions. Oh, too bad the Dragonhorn did not survive. At least it lasted long enough to banish Kalgrontid. He did grow larger with every infusion of power he absorbed, but the horn dislodged him from Jode's core, which allowed me to finish the ritual and end the eclipse. After that... A concern for another day, yes? I cannot be named queen without the main's blessing. That, however, is my worry. For now, you should rest. We must honor our fallen and learn the fate of our troops at the Moon Gate. And after that, we will celebrate a new dawn for elsewhere. We have accomplished much, my friend. We overthrew the tyrant, Euraxia Tarn, defeated Zumag Fum and the betrayer, even killed at least two dragons and made the moons move in the sky. If only I could shake this sense of impending doom. Nothing specific. Not really. I guess this sense of worry will stay with me until I know the fate of Garish Ri, Zamarak, even Prefect Kalo. I would return to the Moongate, but other matters require my attention. Namely, the Envoy of the Main. That is just it. I have no idea. Moons, my head pounds. The effort I exerted at Jode's core was not without... a cost. Five Claw, could I convince you to determine the fate of my soldiers and our friends? I appreciate your assistance, my friend. Find out what happened to Garish Ri and the others, then bring word back to me. Meanwhile... I will try to find a few moments to rest before I meet with the main's envoy or worry about the other dragons. Far from it. But without Kalgrontid and Mulamnir to lead them, they are solitary beasts without a grand plan. Colossal, dangerous beasts to be sure, but not the overwhelming force they were under their dragon leaders. There is little difference between myth and history for the Khajiit Five Claw. Whether Euraxia discovered the Kunzari stories and that led them to the betrayer's head, or Zumog Fum reanimated the head and then learned the tales, who can say?
It's good to see you, Five Claw. We only just returned and I have yet to report to the Queen. Kamira is all right, isn't she? We saw the moons move and the eclipse end, but we haven't heard what happened after you entered the moon gate. After I was caught in that dragon blast, Zamarak tended to my wounds and took command of the soldiers defending the upper ridge. I'm sorry to say that I was in and out of consciousness for most of what happened next. I know that I am still alive and grateful to be back in Rimen. It's a miracle, thank the moons, that the city is free once more. If you want to know what really occurred at the moon gate, you'll need to ask Zamarak and Prefect Kelo. There are those among the troops who need the healers more than I, but perhaps a few hours in the soothing springs will restore my strength. I'll need it too. I have much to do to help Kamira restore Anequina to its former glory. It's you. Good to see you're still among the living. I suppose you had a hand in getting the moons to finally pull apart? Hang on, I need to finish my report. I find that it's best to write it all down while it's still fresh in my mind. It's all in my report. Our troops held their ground and fought bravely. We lost many good soldiers, Khajidi and Imperial, but we did our duty. We slaughtered Euraxians by the score and kept the dragons at bay until the moons broke apart. It was crucial to our survival. When the moons separated, the dragons broke ranks. They seemed to lose their drive, their purpose. They stopped attacking and flew off. Not a moment too soon. We had exhausted both our strength and our ammunition. The ones that survived Zamorak's charge lost what remained of their courage when the dragons abandoned the field of battle. They scattered like sand roaches and ran in all directions. I doubt they'll give the militia too much trouble going forward. We still have a lot to do to heal the scars left by Euraxia and her mercenaries. I'll offer our services to Queen Chimera and Lord Garashri. Let them use us where we'll do the most good. If that's what they need. But the Cygnus Irregulars are mostly military engineers, scouts, and trainers. We have a lot more to offer a kingdom that needs to be rebuilt than just blades and shields. That was our original mission, to help elsewhere. Zamarak is happy to see you, friend. After the dragons entered the Moon Gate and you followed, this one worried that all was lost. But then, the moons parted, and suddenly everything seemed all right. Just what you would expect. We held our ground against the swarming Euraxians and their necromancers, repelled the dragons as best we could. This one let the desert wind flow through his limbs and claws, while our soldiers rallied to his side. Between the Kajiti militia and the Cygnus Irregulars, we held them off. When the moons separated, the Euraxians broke off their attack and scattered to the four winds. The remainder will be a nuisance, but they pose no threat to the kingdom. Zamarak doesn't know for certain. We faced mostly the Euraxians on the upper ridge. Prefect Kelo commanded the Ballisti, so he could tell you more. This one does know that when the moons began to separate, the dragons roared in rage and flew away. Zamarak hopes to serve as Queen Kamira's claw and defend the throne as he was trained to do. If she will not have me, well, Gareshri has many plans for improving life in elsewhere. This one would be happy to help in any way he can. <laughs>
Outsider, this one must speak with you. This one never expected to set foot in the capital of Nequina again. She hoped the militia would succeed, but she didn't believe they stood a chance against the usurper queen. Kashia understands you played a significant role in these events, yes? Such wonders you have accomplished, and you have touched the face of Blessed Jod. This one is in awe. Despite all that, the main has sent me to determine what happens next. Where is Lord Gareshri, the Speaker of the Main? The healers? This one hopes the Speaker wasn't gravely injured. As for your question, we must settle the matter of Enequina's succession. Kashia must determine if Kamira is the legitimate heir to the throne, and if so, recognize her claim. Certainly, but anyone can make such a claim. To be accepted by the Kajiti, she must be recognized by the main. With Gareshri indisposed, will you stand with Kamira and vouch for her heritage? If so, please tell her I am ready to meet with her. Before you return to Kamira's side, this one requests an additional favor. The main gave Kashia a sealed letter for Abner Tharn. But he refuses to see me. I understand that you and he share a special bond. Perhaps you could deliver the letter. The specifics concern the Tharn alone. But this one believes it deals with the artificial eclipse and its impact on Kajiti society. The moons hold great sway over the Kajit born under them. What does this mean for those born during this eclipse? No matter what caused the eclipse, Joan and Jod joined as one. When this occurs naturally, one born then may become the next main. But during a false eclipse, succession becomes a concern. The main hopes Tharn can explain the arcane implications. The main cannot be everywhere at once. That is what the Speaker and the Envoys are for. For now, the Main's duties do not include Anequina. But know that the Main's heart is everywhere in Elsewhere. Now, please deliver the letter to Abner Tharn. No, you simply must stay for the ceremony. It's not every day we get to see a lovely cat receive a crown. Nonsense. And don't call me Abner. Besides, I think I've overstayed my welcome as far as Chimera is concerned. Talk some sense into him. Abner can't just slink away like a thief in the night. It's undignified, not to mention rude. I don't know what goes on in that otherwise brilliant mind of his. You and Cadwell, the two of you just can't leave well enough alone. No one was supposed to notice as I slipped out of Rimen. Of course, very little has gone according to plan since the Wrathstone tablet set me on this path. I am neither sentimental nor enamoured of pomp and circumstance. My time in elsewhere has shown me that I have limits. I am not the battle mage I was in my younger days. Besides, I hate parties, small talk, speeches canapes, totally unbearable. I watched firsthand as a remarkable young woman became a leader. She's already a queen. Everything else is simply ceremony. I've lingered here long enough. You were an able enough traveling companion. I may call on you again sometime. Hmm. An intriguing question. Are Khajiit born under a forced eclipse next in line for the main? 
But this other bit confirms my suspicions. I must travel to Pelotine at once. I'm sure we'll see each other again. Until then, farewell. We accomplished much, but I fear we haven't seen the last of Calgrontide. I must investigate reports coming from the south. You, however, have a queen to crown. Take Cadwell with you and make sure he behaves. And tell Chimera she did admirably. We saw no body, and there's no reason to suppose Cal Grontide couldn't escape from Joe just as we did. He absorbed a remarkable amount of energy while the moons were aligned, after all. I'll send for you if and when I confirm my suspicions. Abner's received a new quest from the main. As soon as we finish here, I'll join him. Quests are my speciality. Oh, fiddlesticks! I just remembered Queen Chimera asked me to be her king's claw. I guess Abner will have to soldier on without me. Yes, indeed. Her exact words were, You can call yourself the Emperor of Cyrodiil, for all I care. Just quit blathering and let me think. <sighs> I've no designs on the ruby throne, but Cadwell the Queen's claw has a rather dashing ring to it, eh? We accomplished much. But I fear we... We saw no body. I assure you, Kasia, my wounds are healing quite nicely. Nevertheless, this one has asked the Outlander to stand beside Kamira. Should I decide to give the Mains blessing? Garish Ri told me you found them. He filled me in on what happened during the battle at the Moon Gate. Dragons and necromancers, I understand. But politics and coronations, ah, they twist my tail and their regalia. It pinches. Moons, I miss my leathers. I am having many thoughts, but I know what I must do. Like Anequina and my other ancestors before me, I must stand tall and accept my responsibilities with humility and grace. Provided the Main's envoy confirms my right to the throne. The woman is inscrutable. I think she just wants to see me suffer until she acquiesces and places the crown on my head. Before the full weight of the kingdom falls upon my shoulders, I want to tell you something. I want you to know I appreciate everything you have done for elsewhere. 
For me. I do not believe we would have survived without your assistance. Now, I understand the envoy asked you to stand beside me at the ceremony. Are you ready, my friend? The healers were able to do wonders, my friend. I almost feel like my old self again. I will secure Kamira's claim. You just stand beside her and support her. She values your presence, as do I. But where is Kamira? I expected you to bring her in. Who will confirm that Kamira is the daughter of King Hemakar and the rightful heir to the throne of Anequina? I will, as her guardian all these years, and as the speaker of the main. Kamira is the rightful heir. Come forth, daughter of Hemakar and Numara. Come forth, child of Enequina. Kamira, do you accept the duties of the throne? Will you lead this kingdom and protect its people? I do, and I will. Know then. That the main accepts and recognizes your claim. All hail, Kamira, Queen of Anequina! I promise to serve our people, and I offer thanks to all who helped achieve our recent victories. Finally, there is one I wish to honor. One whose assistance in these matters was unprecedented and invaluable. Five Claw. My comrade and friend, please, approach the throne. Courageous Five Claw, I will make sure your deeds are sung by my people. They will be told from one generation to the next. As Kunzari passed into legend, so too will you. Then say nothing, my friend. Just know that you helped deliver my homeland from tyranny. You helped me avenge my parents. You saved us from dragons and undead. We will never forget that. I... I will never forget that. You appeared when elsewhere needed you most. In our most desperate time of troubles, you helped restore our nation. You will always have a place here, my friend. And I want you to accept the greatest award I can offer. I name you Champion of Anequina.
Just one more. You appeared when elsewhere needed you most. In our most desperate time of troubles, you helped restore our nation. You will always have a place here, my friend. And I want you to accept the greatest award I can offer. I name you Champion of Anequina. There are still dragons to kill and Euraxians to deal with, but now it is time to celebrate. Take a few moments, talk to our friends, then enjoy yourself, Champion. You earned it. Just what you would expect. I listen to problems and I try to find solutions. I suppose I must coordinate with our allies in the Dominion at some point, and there are still stray dragons and Euraxian deserters to deal with. So, <laughs> the usual things. It is time for different adventures, Five Claw. I must lead my people and erase the memories of the Usurper Queen. May her name be blotted from the histories. Of course, I may find time to slip away and explore a ruin or two. <laughs> Every now and again. And all hail Five Claw, whom I name Champion of Anequina! <laughs> Thank you for helping to restore the bloodline of Enequina Walker. It is good to see a Kashit once again on the throne of Rimen. Gashia apologizes for all the formality, but she had to be sure before she bestowed the Main's blessing upon Kamira. I came to Northern Elsewhere with an impossible task. I took command of the militia and sought to free Rimen from Euraxia's grasp. With your help, we accomplished so much more. You have my thanks for that, champion. As always, I go wherever the men needs me. For a while, I remain in Rimen to provide Queen Camira with whatever assistance she requires. I watched Kamira grow these past six years. She will be a better queen than even I imagined. Wasn't that a beautiful ceremony? Not quite on the level of the time I attended Molon Ball's first daydrick Titan unveiling and Soul Shriven Impalement celebration, but beautiful, just to say. Next, having given it a thought, it's enough trouble keeping track of the past and present to bother with what happens in the future. Maybe I'll finally build that little house on the edge of Cold Harbor's yawning chasm. Ah, the vertigo. Well, certainly. Eventually, it's my home. Besides, who would all the soul shriven look up to if I never returned? Have no fear, my friend. If you ever need Catwell's sword again, I'll rush to your side without hesitation. You have my word. This one's heart sings at seeing Camira crowned queen. Her parents would have been so proud. Thank you, my friend, for getting us to this moment. And for helping Zamarak find his way back to his true calling. Zamarak will always be an adept. But Queen Kamira has agreed to accept me as her claw. This one will protect the queen and serve her as best he can. It is what Zamarak was born to do, yes? I'm glad that the Cygnus Irregulars were able to lend Queen Chimera our support. Help make up for all the evil Euraxia brought with her to elsewhere. Now where's the music? I didn't spend the last six years learning Khajiiti waltzes for nothing. 
I hate the idea of mercenary companies, but without an imperial government in place, that seems to be what we're reduced to. Luckily, Chimera has accepted our offer of assistance and has agreed to employ us. As engineers and aid workers, of course. A few. You'd be surprised how many of their dances can't be accomplished without claws or a tail. I do hope they play the waxing moon, though. I find it rather elegant, and it's the one best suited to my tailless posterior. Ha, 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 ha. 